Professor Dave again, let's talk about staph infections. He knows a lot about the science stuff, Professor Dave explains. You've probably heard some talk about superbugs in the media, but what's really going on? First, let's talk about Staphylococcus aureus, which is commonly known as staph. These bacteria are typically harmless and commonly found on the skin of many healthy people. However, in certain cases, as we discussed earlier when we talked about opportunistic pathogens, these bacteria can cause serious or even deadly infections. Let's get some more information on these little critters. In the past few decades in particular, a more dangerous form of staph has emerged, which is called methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, or MRSA. MRSA is resistant to the entire class of beta-lactam antibiotics, which includes methicillin, penicillin, amoxicillin, and oxicillin, all antibiotics you've likely heard of and almost certainly taken in your lifetime. The different types of MRSA infections are split into categories based on where they're acquired. For instance, healthcare acquired MRSA, or HAMRSA, has been documented since the 1960s, particularly in hospitals and other healthcare facilities. Patients with weakened immune systems, recent surgery, or those with medical devices implanted are at higher risk for HAMRSA and the incidence of these infections has been increasing steadily over time. A second and more alarming type of MRSA infection emerged in the 1990s called Community Acquired MRSA, or CAMRSA. The points of origin for these infections can be more difficult to identify, but are thought to be common in child care settings, long-term care facilities, athletic settings, or in individuals sharing towels or other objects. These infections often first appear as simple skin infections, but can progress into life-threatening illness. So how do these strains develop, and why do they develop? Zooming into the microscopic level, Staphylococcus aureus is the most virulent and best-known member of the group of gram-positive cocci, Staphylococcus. These bacteria have a capsule that protects their outermost layer, and they produce a slime layer that helps them bind to things like catheters, prosthetic valves, or joints, or grafts. Staph aureus also produce an impressive number of toxins and enzymes that help them trigger immune responses and destroy healthy tissue, truly wreaking havoc in the body. When we first started using penicillin to treat Staph aureus infections in 1941, over 90% of staphylococcal isolates were susceptible to the drug. However, resistance to penicillin developed quickly, partially due to the natural evolution of the bacteria, but accelerated by overuse and inappropriate use of these drugs by humans. Many of these bacteria can produce what's called penicillinase, or beta-lactamase, which easily renders the antibiotic ineffective. Even worse, these beta-lactamase enzymes are commonly found on transmissible plasmids, which can be traded between bacteria, essentially like trading cards. The thing is, bacteria are inherently driven to involve, and as humans, we're pretty good at helping them do that. The incidence of disease caused by MRSA has increased significantly worldwide, and the bacteria continue to evolve and take on new traits. For instance, in 2002, scientists found the first staph strains to be resistant to vancomycin, which is one of the few last resort treatments against MRSA. Vancomycin-resistant staph strains, or VRSA, are rare for the time being, but health officials fear incidence of these strains will rise. To reduce your risk of MRSA infection, CDC recommends always maintaining good hand and body hygiene, keeping wounds clean and covered, avoiding sharing personal items such as towels, and checking in with your doctor if you think you might have an infection. And in general, always make sure to only take antibiotics when you truly need them, and when you do, take them exactly as instructed. With some smarts and some luck, we can get rid of these little guys within the century. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com.